Janet. Where are you, Janet? Janet, you've come to help me, my darling, haven't you? Come, darling. You know. Help me. Help me, my darling. Help me. Help me. Help me, Janet. Now they've got us both, haven't they? That's how it should be. I've been looking for you everywhere. Why weren't you with the others? I'm not very popular. I disturb their sleep. You disturb mine. Well, you're different. It's part of your job. My job is to teach. Now, will you please put off that radio? What did Mrs. Hatcher want to see you about? She wants you to see a doctor. No. Why? She can't make me, can she? She might send you home if you don't. I'd rather go home. But you like it here. I don't want to see a doctor. Not the sort she'd send me to anyway. Does Henry know? Who's Henry? My guardian, Henry Baxter. He's a lawyer. 
I expect Mrs. Hatcher will telephone him. She'll have to if I'm going home. He knows about me. He'll understand. What is there to understand? Everything. Doctors and... Henry will come and fetch me. you were asleep, girls. Good night. Comfortable? What am I doing in here? Mrs. Hatcher thought it would be better for the other girls. You'll be going home tomorrow. Did she speak to Henry? Yes, she did. Mr. Baxter won't be able to meet you, I'm afraid. Why not? I don't know. Anyway, it'll be all right. I should be going home with you. Why? It's a long journey. Mrs. Hatcher thought you might like the company. What about you? I like the idea. It'll make a nice change. All right now? Probably waiting for you at home. Is Mr. Baxter at home, John? Mr. Baxter? I don't think so, Miss Janet. It is nice to see you again, John. It's nice to see you again, Miss Janet. I hope everything's all right. Why? Home in the middle of term. I thought perhaps you weren't well. I'm perfectly well, thank you. How long does it take? Oh, about half an hour. How is everything at High Towers, John? Oh, fine, Miss Janet, just fine. John's a very old friend, aren't you, John? I like to think so, Miss. John and Mrs. Gibbs. How is Mrs. Gibbs? Just the same, Miss Janet, just the same. The country's beautiful around here. Slow down, John. What is that place? Stop, John. It's better not, Miss Janet. Do as I say. Please, Miss Janet, you know you... I'm sure John knows best, Janet. It doesn't concern you. Everything concerns me until I deliver you safely home. Again, lovely. And you're looking fine, just fine. Is Henry here? Mr. Baxter? No, he's not here, dear. Why not? Mr. Baxter, why should he be? Yes, he should. He should have met me from the station. Oh, well, perhaps he'll come later. Oh, I was so looking forward to seeing him again. Is my room ready? Yes, I've got a nice bar now. Come on. Oh, what about Mary? This is Miss Lewis. She teaches at my school. Oh, how, how do you do? do? I put Miss Lewis in the blue room. Why? I mean, what's wrong with the guest room? I'm afraid that's my fault. Who are you? I put myself in the guest room, but I can always change. Who are you? My name is Grace Maddox. Yes, Mr. Baxter asked her to come down. He thought you might like someone with you. Why? He thought perhaps you might get lonely. It sounds like a good idea. Yes. Yes, it does. Do you mind having the blue room? It's awfully nice. It's my favorite color. 
Good, I'll show you the way then. No. No, you show her, Mrs. Gibbs. Grace, you come with me. I've got a letter for you, Miss. A letter? For me? Yes, it arrived this morning. A letter for me? What was in the letter? He said he was sorry not to be here to meet you, but he'll try and get down one day next week. He sent me some flowers. You saw them, didn't you? Yes, they were beautiful. What else did it say? Nothing. Just thanking me for bringing you home. Oh, that's just like him. He's very kind. It's such a pity you won't be meeting him. Another time, perhaps. I don't think it's time you were getting up to bed. Oh, I'm not at school any longer. <laughs> Sorry, force of habit. I'm going anyway. It's been such a busy day. Good night, Grace. Good night. I'm so glad Henry sent you to keep me company. Oh, I'm glad, too. Good night, Mary. Grace. Hmm? Do you ride? Yes, a little. Good, we'll go out tomorrow, then. Night. Good night. Would you like some more coffee? No, thank you. There was something else in the letter. Mr. Baxter asked me to tell you all I know of Janet. Well, what do you want to know? She's not well, is she? You're not just a companion, are you? No, I'm a nurse. Does Janet know? No. I shouldn't tell her if I were you. I'm not going to. She seems to have a fear of doctors. May extend to nurses. Yes, it probably does. Mr. Baxter felt that so long as she was going to have a companion, it may as well be somebody who would be of some help in an emergency. Sounds like a good idea. Do you know Mr. Baxter well? No, I've never met him. I, his wife engaged me. Well, I think I'll just look in on Janet and then I'll go to bed. Mrs. Gibbs will get you anything that you need. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Oh, you want something, Miss? No, thank you, Mrs. Gibbs. I'm going to bed now. Oh, good night, then, Miss. Good night. Oh, can I clear away, Miss? Yes, of course. Nice of you to bring Janet home. I enjoyed the trip. She's all right, isn't she? She's, uh, she's not any worse. Worse? Poor darling thing. I don't know how she puts up with it. I really don't. What do you mean? This terrible thing that's torturing her. Never a minute's rest from it, day or night. What thing, Mrs. Gibbs? Oh, you don't know. No, I don't. Sorry, Miss. I... Oh, no, please, Mrs. Gibbs. I'm very fond of Janet. Oh, she's fond of you, too. She told me last time she was home. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss. I thought you knew about her mother and father. I mean that they were dead. They're not. At least, Grace, her mother isn't. Her mother's still alive? Well, if you can call it that, she's locked up in an asylum. You must have seen the place this afternoon. How terrible. Not so terrible as what her mother did that put her there. What was that? Well, it was six years ago. Six years ago this month. Janet was 11 then and such a happy child. She was always laughing and joking. <laughs> oh, we had such fun in those days. This was a happy house. Janet and her mother and father. What happened? It was Janet's birthday. She and I had been out for a walk after lunch. Her mother hadn't been well and was staying in bed. So we'd arranged a little tea party which we were going to have up in her mother's room. We got back, I think it was about three. Janet had found some wild flowers that she picked for her mother. I'm going to take these up to Mummy. I'll take your coat off first. Oh, no, afterwards. <laughs> Eleven, miss, eleven years old. Can you imagine what a thing like that could do to the mind of a child? No. They found her mother insane. Perhaps it would have been better if she hadn't been. Perhaps it would have been better if it had been a, a cold-blooded killing by a sane and normal person. Why do you say that? Well, Janet had a nervous breakdown after that. She was in hospital for weeks. And when she came out, she started to worry. 
That's what's been troubling her this last couple of years. The terrible worry that she might have inherited something from her mother that she might be insane too. That's not very likely, is it? I don't know, miss. These things can happen, I've heard. Not very often. No, perhaps not, but... Has it occurred to you that the terrible worry that it might happen could be sufficient to drive a person out of their mind? I thought everyone was in bed. Sorry if I startled you. Oh, that's all right, miss. I'll just finish putting out the lights. I heard something. I went into your room to see if you were all right. I'm all right. What are you doing out here? I had a dream. At least, I think it was a dream. Did you see anyone? No. If it was a dream, what am I doing here? Come back into your room. You can tell me all about it. What is it? She was standing there. Who was? The woman. I dreamed I woke up and she was standing there. She was staring at me. And she turned and walked towards the door. No, she didn't walk. She seemed to drift. When she got to the door, she turned round and beckoned me. She wanted me to follow her. When I got to the corridor, she'd gone. I was looking for her when you... You found me out there, didn't you? That part of it wasn't a dream. Where does the dream finish and reality begin? Perhaps it wasn't a dream, perhaps... Of course it was a dream. You must have been walking in your sleep. Perhaps I was awake all the time. How could you have been, if you dreamed it? You know what they say about people who see things when they're awake? I don't say... They're mad. Don't say that. Well, it's true, isn't it? Try and get this into its right perspective, Janet. You're a highly strung girl. There's nothing wrong with that. Hundreds of people are highly strung. What it means is that your imagination is liable to play tricks. You can't keep it in control, the same as other people. You're highly imaginative, nothing more than that. You've got to learn to control that imagination. Do you understand me? If you say so. Come on, now. Into bed. I need my sleep, even if you don't. I've got a long journey tomorrow, remember? Do you have to go? You know I do. Anyway, you don't need me now. You've got Grace. Yes. I still wish you didn't have to go. Good night, Janet.
sorry you're leaving, miss. So am I, in a way. Janet? She needs looking after, John. I know. I'll keep my eye on the best I can. I know you will. You and Mrs. Gibbs. But she needs something more than that, doesn't she? She has to learn to believe in herself again. That's the most important thing. Perhaps Grace, Miss Maddox, will be able to help. I hope so, Miss. I hope so. This is a much brighter place now we've got you back home. Mrs. Gibbs, hmm? did Mary say anything to you before she left? Or say what? Anything about me. No, darling, why should she? You don't think... You think I'm all right, don't you? What do you mean, all right? Well, you don't think I'm like Mummy? No, darling, of course not. Mummy used to have dreams. She told me about... Now, look, dear. Thing. Your mother was very ill. Now, you know that. But I have these dreams. Well, that's nothing. So do I. We all have dreams. Not like mine. Oh, never mind, darling. You're home now, and everything will be all right.
Yes, the doctor's with her now. Yes, all right, I'll tell him. How is she? Goodbye. Uh, she's much quieter now, Mrs. Gibbs. How did you get him? Yes. He'll be here tomorrow afternoon at three. Oh, well, I've given her a sedative. It should last through the night. Uh, look in about seven in the morning. If she wants it, you can have two of these. Yes, Doctor. Good night, Mrs. Gibbs. Good night, Doctor. Thank you so much for coming, Doctor. See you tomorrow. Good night. Why does the Doctor want to see Mr. Baxter? I don't know, but we have to find that out tomorrow when he comes. You better go to bed, Mrs. Gibbs. What about you? I'll stay up. I'll look in on Janet from time to time. Oh, it's such a relief having you here, miss. I'm sure I'd never have managed on my own. <laughs> Nonsense, Mrs. Gibbs. Go to bed. Good night, then, miss. Good night. I agree with most of what you say, Doctor. She is nervous, she is highly strung. But what I don't agree with is that it goes any further than that. I'm only giving you my professional opinion, Mr. Baxter. You've known Janet a long time. You know her whole background. This abnormal fear she has that she may inherit her mother's insanity. Now, surely you must see that to send her away would only make that situation worse, not better. But she must have properly supervised psychiatric treatment. I'm not advocating an asylum, just a private sanatorium. Well, doctor, you and I know the difference between such places. Would Janet? I don't think she would. Well, all right, Mr. Baxter. Naturally, I can do no more than make recommendations. Whether or not you act on them is entirely your concern. But at least grant me one thing. What's that? If there are any repeats of last night, then please get another opinion. Just don't leave things to sort themselves out. They won't, you know. That's a promise. That's a sensible young lady you sent down to keep Janet company. She came well recommended. Uh, one of the most important things is for Janet to have people around her that she likes and trusts. And yet you advocate sending her away. Uh, as a first choice, yes, I do. But you rule that out. Well, no, who knows, you may be right. Let's hope so anyway. Uh, how is she? Oh, much better. Still a little dopey, though. You gave her the sedative? Yes, at 7 o'clock this morning, like you told me to. Good. I'll look in tomorrow. Thank you, Doctor. Think over what I said, Baxter. Yes, of course. Well, uh, thank you, Doctor, and goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, may I see her now? Oh, yes, please do. She's so looking forward to seeing you. to be left alone. Am I forgiven? Yes. If you promise to stay here for a while. Oh, I'm afraid I can't this time. Oh, please, Henry. I need you. Honestly, I do, Henry. Well, you're the only one who understands. Can I go to London with you? Perhaps. But uh, later. When you're better. Did the doctor say I was ill? He said you needed rest. Nothing else? No. Why? You know why. What he said only confirms what I've known all along. There's nothing wrong with you. You won't let them take me away, will you? Take you away? What on earth for? You won't. No. Of course I won't. This is where you belong, and as far as I'm concerned, this is where you're going to stay. Now, I must be going. Goodbye, my dear. I'll see you soon.
Perhaps you'd like to sleep somewhere else, Miss Janet. Please, John, please. My room. Let me go now. Good night, Miss Janet. Take these. What happened, Janet? Janet, what happened? I don't even know who she is. I don't even know who she is. Who? How can you dream about someone you don't know? I've never met her before, ever. Oh, Grace, what does she want from me? What does she want? Dreams and imagination can be very strange at times. Often things happen that we just can't explain. Now go to sleep. It's your birthday tomorrow. You want to be fit for that. Go to sleep. Grace? Grace? Grace, are you there? Grace, I thought everybody was out. Please, who are you? Oh, please leave me alone. What do you want? Oh, please. Go. No! No, don't come near me, please. Go away. Oh, go away. Oh, please. Why don't you leave me alone? Please. 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 Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. No, please. Oh, no.
I heard the mirror breaking, so I managed to reach her in time. I put a tourniquet on her, and then I called the doctor. He's with her now. How is she? Well, she's still suffering from shock, mostly. She's lost a lot of blood, not enough to do her any real harm. Oh, thank God for that, anyway. Oh, doctor, how is she? Well, she's quiet now, but I'm very worried about her. Oh, I've taken your advice. I've brought someone down from London to see her, Sir James Dudley. Come in and meet him. Uh, would you ask Janice to come down, please? Yes, doctor. Come on in. for you. Mr. Baxter's here. Henry, he's come for my birthday. Mm -hmm. I knew he wouldn't forget. Grace, does he know about my... Yes, yes, I, I'm afraid he does. Is he angry? No, of course not. You saved my life. Nonsense. Yes, you did. You did. How are you feeling, dear? She's all right, Mrs. Gillis. here. I know. You haven't met my wife, have you? Helen.
I take you back? Oh, thank you. It's all over now. All over. Everything. And the beauty of it is that nothing or no one can touch us. In law, we're guilty of nothing. <laughs> My husband should know. He's a lawyer. Come here, lawyer. What's the matter? Been here two hours and you haven't unpacked yet. <laughs> Who cares? Come here. Mm -mm. I want a drink. Well, you can ring downstairs. I'm going downstairs. I'll see you in the bar. And hurry up. Ten minutes. I'm sorry, he's on his way downstairs. You'll find him in the bar, I think. That's all right. Goodbye. What's this? What you ordered, sir? Whiskey. I ordered a large whiskey. That's what you got. I don't agree. I do the tea, sir. The barman doesn't come on till 5.30. You're too late for tea. I don't want any tea, thank you. <laughs> I can't promise you anything, but would you like a drink? Mm, scotch, please. Who was it? Who was what? Who wanted you on the phone? Nobody. Why? Well, there was a call for you upstairs. Oh, that's strange. I... Oh, Mr. Baxter. I'm uh, sorry about the drink, sir. That old fool thinks it's a social evil to drink before six o'clock. <laughs> I'll get you another one. Thank you. I'd have uh, come earlier if I'd known it was you in the bar, sir. Oh, why? I like to look after my regular customers. Look after them, and then look after you, eh? <laughs> uh, scotch for you, sir. Piano for madam. I hate piano. Oh, but madam always drink. Oh, oh I'm, I'm... I think sorry, you must Mr. be mistaking me for someone else. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Um, madam's drinking... Um... Scotch, please. Scotch, yes, that's two scotches. Fool. But you said you'd never been here before. I haven't. Old customer, he called you. Yes, I know, I heard him. Well, what does it mean? I've no idea. He's obviously mistaking me for someone else. Cheers. Pocket. Where did you 
you buy these? What? These cigarettes. They're mentholated. You don't usually smoke these. No, I don't. Well, neither do I. So whose are they? <laughs> I have no idea. They're not mine. Well, they're in your pocket. Well, I, I don't know how they got there. Henry. Hmm? Where did you go last night after dinner? For a walk. I told you. Yes. So you told me. Oh, Mrs. Baxter. Yes. Mr. Baxter, not with you. No, he's at the post office. Why? Well, it's um, just that I have a message for him. Will I take it? Well, um, a lady called. Oh? Who? A lady. She wouldn't give her name. She said Mr. Baxter would know who it was. I see. Thank you very much. I'll tell you, I haven't got the vaguest idea who it was. Yesterday might have been a coincidence, but not today. You've seen her, haven't you? Seen who? This woman. The one who's called you twice. The one who smokes mentholated cigarettes. The one you stayed with here once before. <laughs> but I've never been here before. So you said, but the barman didn't seem to think so. Well, he made a mistake. Yes, you said that too. Look, there doesn't seem to be much point in discussing the matter. You're obviously not going to believe anything I say. No. I'd like to. But I can't. Where are you going? Um, look, well, what do you want me to tell you, madam? You can tell me the truth, for a start. The truth? What about? You didn't make any mistake last night, did you? Last night? You know what I'm talking about. I... Look, madam, um... How long have you been married? <laughs> Don't see what that's got to no, do with it. Please, madam, how, how long? Four days. Oh, well, that's all right then. I mean, what, what happened took place before you were married? What happened? Well, Mr. Baxter has been here before, about um, three weeks ago. Alone? Last fling. <laughs> Farewell to bachelordom. And he was not alone. Well, when he arrived, yes, he was, but there was a, a young lady staying here. They were the only two guests. You know how it is. Yes. I know exactly how it is. You can deny it until you're blue in the face, but listen to me. You might have been all kinds of a gay boy before, but you're married to me now, till death do us part, and I intend to keep it that way, understand? So if you've got any ideas about getting rid of me, you can forget them. Because we are tied together legally. And because of what happened back there at High Towers. But I don't want to get rid of you. Good. At least we agree on one thing. What are you doing? I'm sick of this place. I want to go home. All right. I'll phone Mrs. Gibbs. Mrs. Gibbs? Of course. You didn't expect me to give her the sack, did you? Well, we're not going back there. Oh, yes, we are. But what about the flat? I've sold it. Why? Because we're going to live at High Towers. That's what I've always intended to do. But it's not your house. It's as good as mine. I'm the sole executor. Besides, who else is going to live in it now? I don't want to go back there. Well, I'm afraid you'll just have to put up with it. You might at least have had the courtesy to wait until Mrs. Gibbs was out of the room. Why? So she could find out what sort of man you really are, is that it? If you listened to me, you wouldn't have to worry about Mrs. Gibbs. I told you I didn't want us to come here. And I told you that this is where we're going to live, whether you like it or not. The fact that I can't stand this place doesn't worry you at all. Not particularly, although I think you're being stupid. You're the one who's being stupid. No good can come of us being here, I can feel it. Now I know you're being stupid. Well, I'm going to bed. Are you coming? We've got things to talk about first. Not this honeymoon business again. Honeymoon? <laughs> That's a laugh. Look, I did not meet another woman before we were married. I did not make any clandestine dates. In fact, I didn't do any of the things you seem to think I did. 
Now, I'm not going to argue about it anymore. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to get out of things as easily as that. Get out of my way, Grace. And you can scour me all you like. You don't frighten me. You don't frighten me one little bit. I'm not trying to frighten you. But listen, I've put up with quite a bit from you these last couple of days. At first, I tried to reason with you, but that doesn't seem to work. Now, I'm telling you. Stop acting like an ill-tempered little child and start behaving yourself. If you don't, I'll... You what? Lawyer? What'll you do? I'll throw you out. And don't try to tell me I can't, because I can and I will. I've worked hard for what we've got now. My wife's money. And all this as well. And I don't intend to have the satisfaction spoiled for me by a hysterical female who doesn't know when she's well off. So you'd throw me out, would you? If I have to. So as you can bring in that other woman. <laughs> I'm beginning to wish there was another woman I could bring in. I think we understand each other. You've known Mr. Baxter a long time, haven't you? Oh, yes, I have, madam. Did you ever meet his wife? His late wife? No, no, I only met her the once that day. Has he ever brought anybody else down here? No, madam, not to my knowledge. What time did Mr. Baxter leave this morning? John took into the station at 8.30, madam. And what time will he be back? He said he'd be catching the 5.30. It gets in at 6.40. Marlow 261. Now, Mr. Baxter isn't home. Would you like to leave a message? I'm sorry, Mr. Baxter is at his office. Can I help? Who is that? Hello. Hello, who is that? And I tell you, I don't know who it was. She asked for you. Is Henry here, she said. Well, it must have been a client. Then why did she hang up? And why didn't she ring you at your office? I don't know. And what's more, I don't care. It's no use ringing that. Mrs. Gibbs isn't here. Where is she? I gave her the evening off. What for? I thought it better if we were going to have a scene. Well, that's very considerate of you, but I, for one, have no intention of having a scene. Well, I have. Well, then you could just have it on it. Ah. I'm damn fuses. I'm not talking to some idiot neurotic teenager now. Who is she? Who? Up there! I don't know what you're talking about. I think you'd better go to bed, Grace. Right. I'll see for myself.
Marlowe, 6-2-4, please. Marlowe, 6 4 Is that the sanatorium? Speaking. This is Mrs. Henry Baxter. Have you any news? I rang to inquire about Janet Freeman. Hello? Are you still there? Yes, Mrs. Baxter. Well? I'm sorry. I thought Mr. Baxter would have told you. Told me what? I don't think I should... Look, whatever you told my husband, please tell me now. Very well, madam. Janet Freeman escaped from here three days ago. We're very worried about her. I'm afraid she's not at all well. Dangerous? She could be, madam. Is she dangerous, yes or no? Yes, I'm afraid she is. Grace? Grace, are you there? Go away! Open the door! Go away! Where's Mr. Baxter? He's gone, madam. He left at 8 o'clock this morning. Mrs. Gibbs, have you ever seen this knife before? No, madam, I haven't. Or you? No, ma'am. John! Have you ever seen this knife before? It could be my pruning knife. What, what is your pruning knife doing in the house? I've no idea, ma'am. But you could ask Mr. Baxter. How would he know? He borrowed it from me yesterday.
Did you see anyone? Ooh. Anyone? A woman? Someone in this house, hiding. I want her found. Do you understand? Well, what are you waiting for? Go and look for her. Get John to help. I want the whole house searched from top to bottom. No! from top to bottom, and then she made us search the whole place again. I didn't even know what I was supposed to be looking for. Well, what did she say? Well, she said something about someone else being in the house. I don't know, but... Well, pardon me for saying so, but I don't think she's well. Where is she now? She's in her room. She hasn't been out all day. Thank you, Mrs. Gibbs. And, uh... Please convey my apologies to John and to Anne. All right. Grace? Grace, it's me. Go away. I want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Grace, open this door. What are you going to do? Break it down. If I have to. Managed to get in all right last night without breaking it down. What do you mean by locking yourself in all day? I'll tell you. Here, I'm safe. I don't have to worry about anybody sneaking up behind me with this. And what is that? That! My dear husband, is the knife you borrowed from John yesterday. I've never seen it before in my life. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to drive me out of my mind? Are you going to get Janet to kill me? Janet? Yes, Janet. I know about Janet. You're drunk. No, I'm not. I was drunk this afternoon, but I'm not anymore. I'm sober. I doubt that. Look, whatever it is you're trying to do, you're not going to get away with it, do you hear me? Glad you've decided to. Who was that in there? It was John. I don't believe you. I was apologizing to him for your behavior this morning. It wasn't John, was it? Well, what were you telling him? That I was sick? A little mad, perhaps? Is that what you were telling him? You liar! It was her, wasn't it? I don't know what the hell you're talking about! It was her! You've got her hidden somewhere here! But I'll find her! I'll find her! I'll find her! more that you want, madam? No. More coffee? I said no, but please leave me alone. Well, I'm just going down to the village now, if that's all oh, right. Oh, do what you want.
Emerged, I see. Does that worry you? Why should it? What have you got there? Don't you know? Janet's, isn't it? Yes, Janet's. Where'd you find it? Where she dropped it. Janet? What are you talking about? Don't pretend you don't know. Well, I don't. And I'm busy. You're not too busy to listen to what I've got to say to you. That depends on whether you talk sense or not. Janet dropped this the other day. And don't play the innocent with me, because I know. Then tell me. You helped Janet to escape, didn't you? I did what? And then you brought her here. You got her hidden here, somewhere in this house, haven't you? At first, I thought it was your girlfriend flitting around. Well, now I know. What do you know? You brought Janet down here to kill me, didn't you? But you're not going to get rid of me as easily as you did your first wife, no. If Janet's here to kill, what's to stop her from killing you? Now, look. Stay where you are! I haven't finished yet. Oh, for God's sake, Grace, put down that knife and start talking some sense. I said, what's to stop Janet from killing you? Well, I can think of a number of reasons. For one thing, she isn't here. She's locked up miles away. And second, even if she was free, she'd never try to kill me. No. But I would. You had it all worked out, didn't you? All you had to do was get Janet down here. And she would stay where you are. Get Janet here and she'd do the rest. Huh? Well, it's not going to be that way at all. You know why? Because I'm going to kill you. Grace, please. You shouldn't be too surprised. After all, attack is the best form of defense, isn't it? And I'm only defending myself. Because if I don't kill you, you'll kill me. You've been working up to this ever since we got back here. But you're squeamish. So you'll get some half-mad girl to do it for you. <coughs> I can't be sure Janet would do the same thing for me, Henry. So I must do it for myself. It'll make no difference, though. She'll get the blame. <laughs> in the asylum. You should know you put her there. No! No, she ran away. She escaped. She must be here somewhere in this house. She must have come straight here. She's killed him. Please, please, ring the police. Number, please. Barlow 624, please. Hold the line, please. That's the asylum. Hello? 
Harlow 624? Yes. I'm speaking for Mr. Baxter, Doctor. I'd like to know how Janet Freeman is. Hold on a moment. Miss Freeman is getting on very well. We expect a complete recovery within a couple of months. Is that all you want to know? Yes. Yes, thank you. I'm delighted to hear it. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. She's made remarkable progress. He believes she'll be perfectly all right in a couple of months. That's wonderful news. But they told me. They told me she'd escaped. They told me themselves. No. I told you. I tapped your phone. I saw her. I saw her twice. You saw me. There isn't anyone else. You didn't have another woman? Nobody else. Only me. You didn't meet with a honeymoon? He never met me. But the hotel man told me! For 50 pounds, he'd say anything. Because of what you both did to Janet. <laughs> now I think we better ring the police. <laughs> Would you connect me with the police, please? <laughs>